it is January and I figure no better time to take you on a quick update of what's going on in the garden. So my channel is called Free Plants Forever and almost all of the plants here I did get for free with some exceptions like this euphorbia I bought but this euphorbia came from a cutting from my mom. These aloes again came from a cutting. Um, when people thin things back here in California you just pop them in the ground and they do really well. These blue agave americana, these big, big, big ones, they were on a Facebook marketplace ad. I just had to show up with a shovel, dig them out of someone's yard. They can just take over if you don't control their pups. So keep an eye on those kind of marketplace ads and it will make a huge difference if you want to fill up a space like this with uh, very little money. When I was out here in July, it was very dry, very different. And look what a difference seasons and seven months of growth can make. It's now January, January 2022, and we've had a lot of rain and it is looking very lush. Um, there's a lot of weeds, but I'm kind of leaving these, a lot of gopher issues. Um, but let me show you what we've got going on here. So these agave tenuatas, they were all most of those were there. Some of them I changed. This was in a different part of the yard. That one came from a different part of the yard. They seem to be pretty happy here. I'm starting to fill in this area with some more agaves and some other aloes. I think they'll be pretty happy here. This gets a lot of like filtered sunlight. Um, these, I can't remember if in July, if these taller aloes were there. One of them was, but I moved the other two. They're much happier there. In the front, the Senecio are really happy. Um, I didn't have much irrigation here. I've since added some, but the rains that we've had lately have made a huge difference. I only just threw that aeonium there recently. That came from a different part of the yard. But one huge thing is these volunteer nasturtiums are kind of taking over. I do love them, but we might have to pull them back a small bit to make sure that all the other plants get enough light. It is January. The aeonians are out of dormancy. They are super happy. Back in July, I had just put in these blue elf aloes. They seem to be quite happy. The blue agave americanas are happy. The sticks on fire, they are happy. Um, these little jelly bean sedums, they're looking a little bit worn out, but they're happy enough. Um, might plant a lot more. I think I mentioned the plan was to create a dry riverbed. That is still the plan. We still haven't bought the stone. It's coming there, but yeah, that is one thing. These um, Senecio, look so much happier when they get a little bit of water. Unfortunately, the gophers also like to eat them. So the gophers have had a heyday in this corner. The aloes are really happy. They probably would eat the aloe. Look, they're about to bloom some more. And somehow this agave has survived any gophers. There was a nice cactus in here that got completely nibbled up by the gopher, it's still there. I think what I'm planning on doing is kind of resetting this whole corner and putting down gopher wire so that it can put something nice in there, not be worried that it's going to be chomped up by the gophers. So on this corner over here, the gophers have had a complete heyday and eaten this up. So the same goes with this corner. I'm going to probably dig it up and reset it. We did, in the meantime, get a lot large mulch delivery, which I don't know, you can't really tell here. A lot of the weeds are gone. I'm planning on throwing in a lot of Xeriscape wildflowers up here. But that mulch delivery, it was just free mulch from the city, has made such a difference to these plants and it also just looks so much better. Coming up to my path, not a whole lot has changed. I still haven't ordered our, our stones or our gravel. Who knows, update in one month, hopefully that'll be in there. But I started planting 
a little succulent tapestry bed and those were just all little clippings that had come from other plants that I had that had kind of gotten overgrown or from little leaf propagations and they seem to be pretty happy. We've got our Fred Ives. In my last video in July, I had just placed this here and again, while it's been a little bit overgrown by these nasturtiums, which I definitely need to thin out, it is very happy. I'm looking forward to the summer when we get those nice magenta flowers from them, but I mean, look, these aeoniums are so happy. This aloe is happy. A lot of these agaves, they're just settling in. So bringing you along the path, again, aloes, happy. Some of the Senecio got eaten up and I've reset some of it. These aloes, I think I had just put in in July. They are well and truly settled in. In the summertime, they'll turn really bright red. This queen of Madeira, which is a um, complete volunteer, is getting huge. They're not my favorite plants, but they are quite big and architectural, so I'll leave it there for now. The aloes, a lot of the aloe torch flowers are blooming. That's one of the nice parts about winter in California. This corner is looking much happier. I added a lot of irrigation. I don't know if you can see a little pipe, um, and that has made a huge difference. Not that we need it now. It's been turned off in the last couple of months. These mother of thousands, I mean, they are a little bit invasive and can take over, but I love their flowers that happen this time of year. And uh, some little gopher abatement. It's, uh, if you know, you know. It doesn't always work. And that is next to this euphorbia that the gophers are supposed to not eat. They don't really like. Obviously, my path uh, requires a little bit of weeding. And I was doing it for a while, but then I kind of thought, you know what? The green looks nice. We'll leave it a little bit. Again, aeoniums this time of year. If you have a look in here, there's so many little pups. If you thin that out, you reset them elsewhere, and you end up with a ton of more plants. These Crassula golems, I think I had maybe just put them in in July. They're finally settling in and looking happy. And I have a lot more Senecio that are looking really sad, and I just figure, give them a couple of months and they'll come back to life. So as you see, like, I know these agaves are gonna get too big for the space, and that's fine. I'm just leaving them here until they get a little bit bigger, and then I'm gonna move them. I have a lot of space elsewhere, or give them away. And this is even one of my little hidden places where it's like almost a plant rehab. There's a lot of agave attenuata that are looking pretty bad that I have stuck back in the shade there. I'll let them rehab themselves. Here's another little plant I just found the other day, a little broken piece of it. I can't remember what that's called. It's a kind of succulent, but it also has these almost little orchid-like flowers. And I figure here, and this is a little bit more of a shady spot, everything's a lot more green. Um, I think it'll be pretty happy there. Again, these nasturtiums are getting a bit out of control. There's a lot of aloes in here that are now not getting direct sunlight, so I need to thin that out. Now back here is my clearance um, euphorbia tie kind of thorns. Um, it just dropped a bunch of flowers. It was really pretty and flowering, but there's a lot more buds happening now, so I think that'll come back really happily. You know, it's winter, some plants go into dormancy in the summer, some go into dormancy in the winter. But I think spring is coming for that one. Not bad for a $5 plant. We filled this whole space in with the mulch, um, which is just definitely helping with soil health. Um, I'm now filling in a lot of this space with the Senecio and starting to train these trumpet vine onto this tree. More aeoniums. These little tree aloes, tree climbing aloes, they are blooming, they're really happy. Um, I got those, just someone, again, 
clipped their things on the side of the road. They were left there. I popped them into the soil here and have just ignored them and they are pretty happy. I figure they sometimes they do like climbing, so I figured putting them next to a tree was a good idea. We'll come back to our end of our little path and coming down here. I think this is a kind of ice plant, which I'm not usually a big fan of, but it looks kind of like small Senecio. Again, a neighbor had left that out, um, clipping it back along with these um, kiwi aeoniums, which were not happy over the summer. They were looking pretty bad, and now they are looking lush and full. My little succulent tapestry in the log is looking really happy. Um, quite happy with the way that's filling in. The jelly beans are kind of going crazy there. Looking really happy. And then this is becoming the sort of like jade crassula corner. So I moved that from another part of the yard, that from another part of the yard, and I've just planted a few more again. Cut, found, when I go on a run, People do weed whacking. These things just get cut. They're left on the sidewalk. I pick them up, put them in my pocket, and plant them in here. Again, these jade, same thing. I only just placed them in the ground yesterday, so they're not looking good, but they will turn into that better looking jade there. And these Senecio, they don't get as much light, which is why they're very stretched, but they do make a nice pretty ground cover. When we turn around, here is our fence area. I placed all these agaves. They're really happy there. Um, I can't remember if we had put the stone in yet. I'm sure we had put the stone in um, last summer, but everything is just filling a little bit. I put in some sedum uh, ground cover that I got from Home Depot into these little nooks and crannies. They're doing okay. They're not super happy. Um, but hopefully they'll fill in. This area doesn't get as much sunshine. I might cut back some of these um, Bird of Paradise to help with getting some more light to this area because I would like to fill this in with more um, cactus. The agave don't seem to mind too much. I think some nice cactus would look great here. And we've got our Kentia palm that is, I don't know if it's fully settled in yet. <laughs> I'm not sure how happy it is. And there's the front of the house. In this corner, this is one of the first things I did in the garden, was fill in this corner and it's doing okay. It might even be time to kind of trim it back and reset it. I think these Fred Ives are getting a little bit too much sunshine. Not sure how happy they are. So we'll see. And uh, literally yesterday I had some Senecio I just cut and threw in there and eventually they'll fill in like that. We've put in a bunch of Lantana that are finally, like a year later, are finally taking hold. Luckily, the gophers don't seem to eat them, although we did have a gopher eat an entire lantana plant. I thought they were poisonous, um, but yeah. So, if we carry on back here. We've completely reset this part of the yard. A little nice seating area. This is the queen of Madeira that has just thrown off babies all over the yard. My little propagation station here, sort of looking a bit organized today. Here's where I keep all of my greenhouse plants. And this is supposed to be a cleared work area, but clearly I have some work to do as far as that goes. This is my native California um, plant hillside. This hill was just a big mess of dirt one year ago, and a lot of it would tend to, you know, if we had any rains, it would just fall down on the side. So I researched which plants were the best for, you know, holding in um, the soil. 
and not require too much water. Unfortunately, that manzanita has bitten the dust. That's the second one. So there are some, we do have a lot of gopher problems. And even though they don't eat the manzanita, I think they created tunnels under that one's roots. But we have some um, Ceanothus, Yankee Point, that's going to hopefully fill in and start spilling over the side here. There's some yarrow, some non-natives. I didn't realize at the time, um, rock rose. We have some salvias, different salvias up there. There's another salvia. I also wanted it to be kind of a pollinator garden. So I chose plants that would um, attract butterflies and hummingbirds. Here's some of the apuntias that I have propagated. A lot of the succulents. So here's some happy sedum up there. And yeah, so hope there's, there's uh, buckwheat. I'm looking forward to the spring when this starts to really fill in and we'll have to replace that manzanita. That just makes me so sad. Um, these um, pelargonium, that was already here. Those two back there, they came from cuttings from uh, some city property. I just took a little snip snip and they've become full on bushes. So here is also our, our um, I don't know, would you call it our orchard? We put in these um, redwood boxes. We've got a fig tree, a Meyer lemon, and a tangerine. Um, you can see we, there's a lot of volunteers that have taken over. We had some arugula in here that's just taken over. There were sweet peas. They've taken over a lot of the calendulas and marigolds that we had. Um, they went to seed and they spread over here. And the lettuce, this was full of lettuce. The lettuce went to seed. So we have lots of lettuce and some carrots and some peppers. So that's January. Like, look at that. That's all going to become a big bunch of calendulas. It's funny because we spent a lot of money putting very pricey, nice, rich soil into these boxes and everything. Just all the volunteers are going out into the um, hard clay on the outside of the boxes. That's how it goes. And then the not so exciting part of the garden, we have these giant bird of paradise. And then this is like the family, the family place, the lawn. Not a whole lot going on there as far as gardening goes, but it's there. Figure I might as well put it on this video. And yes, here are all my millions of projects that I've yet to set around the yard. All my um, little propagations from leaves all my little storage of soils and foods and things and a lot of these are little things that have either come from clippings from Home Depot, chopped succulents that don't look good now but will look good later. Again more clippings that I just place them in these to get them growing. It's in the shade here so these will turn bright yellow and these are all leaf propagations that came from other plants and even more. This is my kind of dead garden. I'll have to do a whole video about that. The little mini greenhouse, these are more like house plants that I have propagated that don't look super good so I don't want them in the house. They don't look super fashionable but um, they're quite happy in here for now. Uh, it keeps them a little bit out of the weather and uh, eventually Eventually they'll make it inside. And yeah, my house is just full of all these places where I'm like, this doesn't look good for the yard yet, but I want to save it to put in elsewhere, or it's a rehab. So a lot of these aeoniums that were cut and you just put the stems in and they just start to grow back. Um, same with these Fred Ives. I don't know if you can see, they're just like cut stems. You stick them in the soil, they start to grow back. Another rehab box, look at this aeonium. Cut stem, stick it in there, growing so many more plants. So that's what I mean when I say free plants forever. Here's some more leaf propagation boxes. I could go on and on, and I will make more detail about different plants. A leaf propagation box, I will go into more detail about 
you know, what to do with these plants and how to get free plants from them. I should also show you, I don't really show this part of the house much, but this is like another storage area of plants that are either in rehab or I have been gifted. All of these Cymbidium orchids were given to me by a neighbor. They are finally in bloom and I have to admit, I have been really bad. I need to repot them and put them in nice fresh orchid bark. But for now, um, they're pretty happy in this spot. They get kind of dappled, shady sunlight. There's another orchid that was just thrown on the side of the road by a neighbor. And some other little rehab plants that came from other parts of the yard. This is a banana tree that was eaten by a gopher. It's come back. And um, this is a very not planty part of the yard. But luckily it gives me lots of storage space and we're eventually going to make this part of the yard pretty. There's just too many projects to be done. And that is what we call a full tour. Um, so there's the yard in January. I will plan on doing more of these um, little walkabout tours as the garden changes and evolves and the seasons change, etc. Thanks for joining me. This has been Free Plants Forever. You can like this video, you can subscribe. I'm very busy on TikTok. Um, say hi, what, what do you wanna learn more about? I'm really happy to um, give you all my tips on how to grow your plant collection or your grow your garden for you know little to no money. Yeah.